When I was Prime Minister, I arrived in the government at a time where the country was struck by four hurricanes. So already there, was, there were some major destructions in the whole school infrastructure, uh, from primary school through university. Uh, when I left, that's when the, the, the earthquake occurred, which, make the, which made it even more difficult because there we lost practically all the schools were physically destroyed in Port-au-Prince. We lost about 4,000 to 5,000 people in the school administration, whether students or, or administration or teachers. Uh, and we were in the middle of a education reform when this occurred. So it made it even more difficult for us to know where to start. And uh, we decided to, that it had to be on both ends of, of the education spectrum. Let's see what can be done for early childhood education, which in Haiti was very difficult because when I was in office, uh, schools in Haiti start at six. So anything that before six is private, which is a factor of exclusion. So it was a big, big fight to try to convince the government that we had to start school at a very early stage, knowing also that the values, that the practices, that the autonomy of the child and what goes on in, the, in his brain at this early stage is extremely important and will have an effect in his whole career. So now it started. So it's a big, big, big plus for the Haitian uh, education system that we can start now at three. And at the other end, for the past 25 years, there's, there has not been one single penny in higher education. And it's very difficult to understand why the donor community chose not to invest in higher ed. Because without investing in higher ed, how can you pull the whole system up if you don't have trained teachers, if you don't have scientists, if you don't develop competence and qualification at the highest level. So now uh, I'm very proud to say that last week I was part of a team that signed a, a contract with uh, the, the Faculty des Sciences, which is the engineering, the School of Engineering with MIT for their open courseware. And we're very pleased to know also that this uh, department, the, the, the engineering school, will be open, the open courseware will be open to all students, not just in this uh, department, but all universities, all students will have free access to this great uh, resource that MIT has put uh, to the world uh, access. So working on both ends of the spectrum has been extremely important for us in terms of not only qualification, innovation, but values. The superstructure in education, you know, the ministries, are not changing as fast as the world is changing and as fast as our youth, our children and youth, are asking us to change at the highest level. How can education can be the vector for changing society. And this means changing how we teach, changing how our, the content of education is adapted to this modern world, that the, ch the child or the youth are no longer you know, an individual facing his own reality only. We're, we are in an open world with new challenges. And if education cannot adapt to that, to change society, I think we're going to face a lot of very difficult problems. Is education geared towards the market? Which is also an issue, because if that's the only sense, that the only direction, education itself becomes a market. And it's not. You, you educate to create citizens that are fully aware of the values linked to citizenship and enfranchisement, and that can become active in their country in building a better society. But at the same time, that are 
I don't like to use the, the word useful, but in a way that's what it is, to build better industries, better um, manufacturers, better services, and serve also in the public sector. Teacher training has been too simplified. You know, they, they come and they give you like um, recipes uh, as if that's what matters. No. I think education is not, is not just transmitting uh, uh, values or knowledge. It's generating. How do you train a teacher so that, of course, he, he, he masters whatever area uh, he's teaching in, but at the same time, how can he generate knowledge from what he gathers so that he can he, he inform the student that it's not just transmitting something that you routinely repeat, but rather, how do you think? What type of thinking can you generate from all the components you get as a student? And it has to come from the teacher. Nothing has been done enough to inspire the teachers and to trigger the teachers toward his own research. He is installing a routine and the student go much faster than he does. So this creates also a lot of frustration in, in, in the field. I believe more has to be done for teachers. And it's, it's interesting that technology also can offer that. I teach, but I teach with a lot of passion because I'm, I try to be within what I'm teaching so that what I transmit to my student is knowledge, of course, is a sense of urgency to learn more and be more adapted to the world, but at the same time, to understand that in themselves, there is a soul that needs to be epanoui, that needs to blossom fully. And if you don't have that, there is something greatly that is missing in your own being. And I, I, I don't think we should miss that important component. It's, it is part of our world individually and collectively. And that's what gives sense to uh, our, our investment in education.